You won't believe what I've put together in the last week. Everything that I've researched and shown you guys in the last two years has come together in one unified puzzle with mythology, numerology, um, festivals, and uh, actually to, from the power outage uh, that happened in 1989, everything has synced together in one unified piece and it's showing um, the date. Okay, and this is the last time I'm going to <laughs> work on the date. I, my inner gut tells me this is it. It's impossible for it to not to be. And I'm just going to bring you guys along on the ride. So biblically, everything is supposed to relate to the blood moons. And there's all these events that have happened before uh, according to the blood moons. And it, this is what really got my attention was I'd never really gone deep into the blood moons. And I realized that it's something I needed to do. And it showed me the way. I found NASA's site where they map the blood moons because I'm not sure scientifically how the blood moons like work in a pattern. They don't seem to really have a pattern. So I needed to go to NASA to find the actual dates that they've happened before. They even have down the crucifixion of Christ in the year 33, the number 33, on April 3rd. So I had to go back and check and see if it was April 3rd and it wasn't. It was April 1st. And what's interesting is that the moon was in conjunction with Shambhala. April Fool's Day, or you could say the Fool's card on the tarot, which would be the zero card or the 22nd card of the tarot. So I'd shown you this artwork I'd done when I was about 16 before and I had painted a sword going through the moon and there was blood coming out of it and I never I just thought oh the moon is bad right now I, you know a big revelation for me was like you know the sword goes into Christ and it was on a blood moon so now I'm like oh my god my intuition was leading me all this time and decoding Satan she's a gematria lady that's brilliant and she, after my last video, she left this comment and I was like, oh my God, she's right. We need to look more into the 33rd pentagram, Venus pentagram. I had done the 33rd Venus pentagram about a year and a half ago. You know, these are all the pieces of puzzles I'm talking about, but I, you know, I didn't know how they all fit together. So she's decoded all the numbers and she's like, no, no, no. The number 224 in Gematria, it's all leading to the year 2025. So when she told me that, for some reason, I was like, well, yeah, I know about the Venus pentagram, but I need to match it to the blood moons. So that's what I've done. And she also had put April 1st, the Friday, because they said Christ was killed on a Friday. And that's exactly the blood moon. Like, so she knew too, right? So I'm like, oh my God, this is crazy. But check out her numbers and they're brilliant, really brilliant. And of course, the number 2424 is the dates between the two eclipses that are crossing the United States, one in 2017, the next one in 2024. And remember, Friday is Venus Day, Vendredi in Fitch. Now, everybody knows the 33 degree of Freemasonry. So they're showing us the number 33 is super important. Even the UN logo actually has 33 uh, pieces in it. Also, the Tree of Life in Kabbalah has 33 paths. The sun and the moon cycles align every 33 years. They're really the two pillars. They're Cancer, the moon, ruled by water, and Leo, the sun, ruled by fire. They're the only const constellations that are ruled by the sun and the moon. Every eight years, there ends up being five conjunctions with Venus and the Sun and Earth, okay? So it makes this pentagram in the sky. It's called the Rosabella. Ends up looking like a rose. And my old video, I'd mapped this all out, okay? So it's actually every 583.92 days is when the conjunctions happen. So we've had the one in 2017, 2018, uh, 2020. So we have January 9th left in 2022 
in August 15th in 2023. They're happening in Sagittarius and Leo. So then I did some math here. It's kind of cool though. The March 22nd date is when the 33rd pentagram starts. So that's a 322 number, which is the Skull and Bones Yale Society Brotherhood of the Dead, right? Um, that's their number, 322. So ascension is really considered to be death, right? It's like you're born again. You're the phoenix rising from the ashes. So here we have the start of the 33rd pentagram since the founding of the United States in 1776. Baron Trump's birthday is March 20th in 2006. It's like two days off. And the spring equinox is also March 20th in 2025. So the magic square is of for Venus is 749, 175, and 1225. Now if you take the gematria of all the dates of these conjunctions, they end up coming to 4 plus 9 equals 13. 49, one of the numbers, is 7 times 7, right? Makes 39, uh, 49. So 1,225 1, divided by 175 equals 7. So we get the 7 planets. And then if you take 1,225 divided by 49, it brings you to 25. So it's like there's a mathematical equation there bringing us back to the number 25 which happens to be the year of the snake. Also the date March 22nd, if you take the 2-2 two -two and make them like 11-11, and you take the numbers 2025, that's 9, so you get the 3-11 and the, the mirroring 11-9, which Levette keeps talking about. We need a 3-11, 11-9. So with the Venus magic square, all coming to 25, the year 2025, March 22nd, is when everything is conjuncting on Moby Dick's tail, Citus's tail. Venus is like on Pegasus's back, so she's like riding the horse. And you can see like everybody's there. Osiris is there, Neptune's there, Venus, Mercury, the sun, you know, they're all there, which it's really in the constellation of Pisces, right? The, even though it's on the tail of the whale, that is still considered to be Pisces, and that is the spiritual constellation for religion and spirituality. Now, Pluto, who rules the other realm, he's in the exact same location, of course, as it was on the founding of the United States. It takes 240 eight years for him to get back to where he was before. So since the founding of the United States, it's one cycle. Now, Don Moby Dick, the astrologer I, guys, I spoke to you guys about, had Jesus Christ's birthday on March 1st in the year 6 BC. And this was all happening also in the same location, the tale of the whale. Now, in biblical texts, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great awesome day of the Lord. That's Joel 2.31. So here's all the blood moons all mapped out with tribulation. Now the first blood moon in tribulation was May 26, 2021, which just happened a couple of months ago. On May 26th, which was, according to Santos, that this was the beginning of, well, the end of the Aztec sundial calendar that they had marked their time, not like the Mayans, which was supposedly to 2012. The, the Aztec sundial went to this date, this blood moon. So this correlates with the tribulation of the seven years. So I really do believe that's why Elvis Presley had that Aztec sun on his back on his last performance because that's the beginning of tribulation so this this is really accurate in my understanding okay and i'm going to focus in on this march 14th blood moon which is the first one after the halfway mark in 2025 which is eight days prior uh, earlier than this 33rd venus pentagram that happens on march 22nd okay so we have a blood moon on the 14th eight days later beginning of the 33rd Venus pentagram since the founding of the United States. The midway point of tribulation is really important because that's when the souls that can see the illusion or can stay in bliss get to leave this realm. 
Okay, and then the last half of tribulation is when everything turns into total chaos for the people that weren't able to find the hand of God. So May 26, we started the tribulation. The blood moon was in Scorpio. This is called the Tree of Life Star. So Scorpio is ruled by Pluto, right? The, the keeper of the other realm. There's Osiris right on the tail of the whale. Osiris is like the Tree of Life. And we have Neptune and Uranus in Aries, which is the Lamb of God, Heaven. And Neptune is also on the tail of the whale. He's the ruler of the Black Horse of the Sea. So Sitis is also known as Odin's Slepner Horse, which is the eight-legged horse. So it, it, this is all, you know, mythologically, this is all working out. Here's Elvis's Aztec sundial from his last performance. And he also had a song come out on March 22nd, All Shook Up. And the lyrics are, ah, oh, well, I bless my soul. What's wrong with me? So he's relating, even though it's like a, pop, a rock song, he is putting the word soul in that song. And I think, it, you know, he's talking about love and everything. And I think it's like when you have this love bliss in you, you're all shook up. You're going to ascend. This is how the energies work. You have to be in this bliss state. And ascending has nothing to do with floating. Okay, this has, it's to do with grounding your energies into the planet. It's not float up in the air. So this March 14th blood moon is going over North America and, you know, part of Africa and part of Europe, but there's a section where it's not passing over. Here's a list of the future blood moons. So the actual date of the halfway point is February 12th in 2023. And coincidence, it happens to be 322 days left in the year. So the number 322 is popping up everywhere mathematically. Yes, yeah, Skull and Bones, it's called the Brotherhood of the Dead. And really, it's actually Ascension, to tell you the truth. Um, it goes to the chromium in the periodic table. It also uses the winged with the skull de dead. And same for the Grateful Dead also uses that symbol. It actually means Ascension. The chromium brings you to the rainbow. Okay, so this is interesting because you know, they're trying to make you think it's all evil in a way. They're tricking you, right? But it's actually, they're, they're telling you the good, right? So and then you're going, oh, I don't like the good. It's, it's evil. It's satanic. So they're, they're, it's kind of like a, um, you know, that's what this realm is. It's basically polarity. You have to see the good in everything, not just see it as bad. So here is chromium. It's the 24th periodic uh, table element. And you can see it's like the, the skull with the wings. And it says here that it has a meaning. Chroma means color, but it actually goes to rubies. That's where chromium comes from, the ruby slippers. And this also refers to rainbows. Okay, so I've done research on that before. But this is what the skull and bones is representing. The number 24 is the alchemic symbol for Jupiter. Of course, they're using that for the Olympics in 2024, the year of the dragon. Here I did a side by side with the Venus pentagram dates and the blood moon dates. And the one that is really mapping out is these eight days between, right? March 14th and the March 22nd pentagram. So you can also look down and see where the other ones are. And I put the Chinese years in. So the year 2025 is the year of the snake. And I, I actually can't believe that this all works out to the tribe of Dan. And I'm going to explain how this all ties to the tribe of Dan. And it all ties to math. Okay. It's, it's nuts. Okay. Just hang on with me because this is going to be crazy. The 34th pentagram starts in the year 2033 on March 20th, which is Baron Trump's 27th birthday. And you guys know I've been going on about Zavi Java, right? Zavi Java is the ascension star on the shoulder of, left shoulder of uh, Virgo. And I couldn't believe it that this blood moon's on Zavi Java. And what's opposing it in Pisces with Saturn very close by is Osiris conjuncts the sun. Okay, I went through all the blood moons. There's never 
anything conjuncting the sun um, when the blood moons are happening. This is the first time. Okay, so this is this is nuts. This is this is like amazing. It's the tree of life with a blood moon on the ascension star. Osiris is like the the solar king, right? He is an, an Egyptian and he is the, the god that has to die and be reborn, right? He is he's the father and the son. And Saturn is almost in conjunction with them and he's the god of the golden age. So it's like, wow, all in the constellation of Pisces spirituality. You know, I've been calling coffee Zavi Java for a couple of years now. And so I'm like, there has to be a Zavi Java drop somewhere, right? So I end up going on Amazon and there it is. There's this patriotic American flag, rustic metal uh, magnet. And it says Zavi Java across it, but it's not available. So I check out the company name, which is called Any and All Graphics Store. But this, it's not, it doesn't exist, okay? But there's this, like, hero figure, you know, there. And I'm like, are you kidding me? So, anyhow, I was just laughing my head off, right? I go back the next day to find it on Amazon. It's not there. I can't find it again. So I was so happy I got a screenshot of it. But this just, you know, made me laugh my head off. I was like, it was the funniest thing. And check out, he's holding his finger with his one hand. You know, it's a golden hand. And I'm going to tell you what that all means later. So AI is watching us, right? And I always had this, you know, the AI path is bad. But even AI, it has its good and its bad to it, right? It's, it wants us to, to find the door. So it, it plays with me. It, it, it really does. Like it drops stuff like that and then it disappears. And then other weird stuff happens. You know, things just pop up on my computer and I'm like, what the heck? But I just find it humorous right now. It's like, I just think it's like a big joke. It's really funny. So not only is the blood moon eight days before the March 22nd pentagram of the 33rd Venus pentagram, the blood moon happens at 322 in the sky. Okay, so in the middle of the night at 322. And at 322, I put the horizon in, the golden gate is on the ascension, and the descending is the serpent coming close to um, Procyon, the, the star. So there's the whole archway of this, that's what's going to be in the sky. Okay, so the golden gate, of course, has the shield, and that's where you fight the dragon. So I was like, okay, there, I'm pretty sure there's something in biblical texts referring to this. Also, Aquila's there, which is the eagle, and then you have Cygnus, which is the cross of Christ, right on the left of the golden gate. Dan shall be the serpent by the way, an adder in the path, and be it the horse's heels so that the rider shall fall backwards. Okay, this is Genesis um, 49, 17. Okay, so let's put it in a little bit easier English here. Dan will be a snake by the roadside, a viper along the path that bites the horse's heels so that its rider's, rider tumbles backwards. Okay, this is astrology. Okay, I'm gonna show you what they mean. The tribe of Dan is the serpent. It also does the judging. So the judgment day, I do believe, is matching this biblical text. So here's the horse. So the serpent is biting the horse's heels. And Athena is on the little dog riding the horse. But she's falling backwards. She's in retrograde. Okay, so you can see her here. Um, also, Venus is riding the horse. And she's also in retrograde, which is Pegasus. She's riding Pegasus. Procyon is where Athena is like on he's on like the the little dog riding the horse so he's known as the carpenter an aspect of Marduk involved in constructing and organizing the celestial sky also um, bleary-eyed woman teary-eyed woman in Turkey uh, Chinese she's part of the uh, vermilion bird which is like the phoenix it's also part of the Braveheart. In Brazil, um, it's the state of Amazonia, which is like Amazon. that represents that on their flag. I truly believe the divine is math, okay? Because it's the planets where the math comes from. And then we have the, 
the cycles of the planets create sacred geometry, which is what the plants grow like. You know, like it's all it's all golden ratio Fibonacci. But this is what's crazy. March 14th is the ultimate pie day. I had mentioned this before, okay? It was in 1592 and it was at 6.53 a.m. And it's, it represents the introduction of the Julian calendar. So pi is 3.14, right? So I had gone through pi day and the reason I knew Moby Dick was so important was because pi day is when the sun is in is at the tail of the whale. So I knew that this was a, a really important part in the sky. So March 14th, when this blood moon is happening, is the ultimate Pi Day. And the reason it's so important is because Uranus and the moon is in conjunction with the sun on this date on March 14th. That's why it's so important. Uranus represents heaven and the moon represents when it's going to happen. So I guess why they have it at 6.53 is because Osiris is just on the ascending with the cluster on the tail of the whale. But Osiris is in Aries, the crown chakra, and the rest is in Pisces. And then on the other side, Scorpio's there at the Golden Gate is in the descending. March 13th in 1781 is when Uranus was discovered, supposedly. And the synodic period is 369, the magic 369 that Tesla says is once you find the key to the universe, it's 369. Yeah, it's Uranus. So they could have said Uranus was discovered on March 14th, right? Because it's, you know, anyhow, but it's the one day off. But March 13th ties into some of this too. So it, just this whole time is when the sun is on the tail of the whale. But way, way back in time, the sun was right in between the two feet of Pisces, the two fish. Okay, so it's like in the V. So V for victory, you know, it's like right in between there at the beginning of the calendar. But this is funny. May I have a large container of coffee works out the letters, the numbers of letters works out to pi 3.14 blah 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 okay but it relates to coffee so I think it's kind of funny because it's like pi day and then the blood moon is on Zabi Java which is coffee and this is why Trump went all about kofifi and the whole coffee thing I'll have to do a whole new vi other video on that that is hilarious when I was chasing that uh, a lead it was so funny and I'll have to show you guys that it's just hilarious of course Phi is golden ratio, right? When everything works in a spiral and grows in a spiral. So the square root of pi is 1.272. Four divided into that number comes to 3.144, which is almost pi, less than a tenth of a percent. Now they had options. They could have, you know, put pi on March 14th because the numbers match pi. But actually, mathematically, they could have put it on July 22nd as well because those numbers match pi. So they chose March 14th, I think, because of Uranus's pattern. Okay, and this all ties into why they picked that specific year to be Pi Day. And I'm going to show you why. It's because of the beginning of the calendar is where Uranus was, was in this location at the zero year. So every 83.75 years, Uranus gets back into Pisces. So it was between Pisces, like I said, in between the V of the tethers that go to the fish, right to Citus, right? So it was right in between there at the zero year of the calendar year. So when you get to the 13th one, um, there's on, on 1,088, it mirrors something to do with the Salvation Army that started in 1880. Okay, they're using the same numbers there. There's a mirror meaning because 13, we know 13 is so important, right? It's the 13th Zodiac. It's also ties to the cube and the 13th dot on the cube. Anyhow, it's, it's mathematical. Okay, so they put the Pi Day on the 19th cycle, which was in 1592. The 22nd cycle has Einstein's birthday, which is March 14th. He was born on Pi Day. No wonder he was 
chosen is to be the scientist, you know, and Tesla was not. Um, then um, the 24th cycle start, was started in 2010. So we're in the 24th cycle with uh, Uranus being on Moby Dick's tail, right? Pegasus is back, Odin's Sleipner's horse with the eight legs. Okay, so we won't get into the 25th one until the year 2096. So number 24 we know is super important because it's Jupiter's alchemic symbol. So this is why I'm saying why they picked March 14th instead of July 22nd. It's because of the placement where Uranus was. On the 19th cycle, which 19 is to do with Jesus, and then, you know, they had the sun and the moon there doing, you know, a conjunction. So sun and moon with Uranus on the tail of the whale. That's why it's done like that. Okay, so also the numbers look like pi, like the spelling of pi. Tech company on March 14th, Pi Day, you know, makes fun of Trump with a finger in, in the pie. And then this is funny. Trump does this cherry pie law change. The FDA did this tweet breaking new proposed rule. Thanks to the hard work of my FDA team in 2018, the federal government will no longer be regulating the contents of frozen cherry pie. The American people are free. He misses the word to add extra fruit, sugar, and make the crust specially thick. Like it's a big joke, right? He just happens to miss out the word, so it says the American people are free. And it has to do with pie. This is why I'm saying they're, they're dropping that pie day is important. It gets even more crazy. Just wait till you get It's like it gets nuts. What's American pie? It's a song, right? There was college courses trying to decode the lyrics to this song. Did you write the book of love and do you have faith in God above? If the Bible tells you so. Now, do you believe in rock and roll? Can music save your mortal soul? And can you teach me how to dance real slow? It says here, and the good old boys were drinking whiskey and rye, singing, this will be the day that I die. Okay, it's the day that we die. It's American Pie, they're telling us. But guess what? The Mathematical Institute for Pie nominated this song. Okay, because it it's, is. It's all about infinity. Pi is infinity. It's God. Exactly like Plato said, numbers are the highest degree of knowledge. It is knowledge itself. And it's because numbers have patterns. The sky is numbers. So just think of the planets as numbers and they, they create mathematical patterns in the sky. That's really what it is. It's divinity. So at the end of the song, there's two chairs rocking with nobody in them between the two pillars. And it's all about that because ascension means you just, you're no longer part of the matrix. You just disappear. You're, you're invisible. You're no longer playing by the rules. You're in a different frequency. Your, your brain is activated in a way that can create manifestation of everything. You don't need to be seen. You don't need to work. You don't need part, be part of this, you know, the slave system. That's what ascension is. Don McLean. I used to listen to him all the time. This is hilarious. Don McLean, quote, and when people ask me what American Pie means, I tell them it means I don't ever have to work again if I don't want to. Okay, because you find the door. You don't have to work again. It's, he's not thinking like, oh, I'm just making a lot of money and I don't have to work anymore. That's what a, th a third dimensional thinking, you're thinking about the system. He's saying you don't have to work anymore. Because you found pie, you found the door out of here. You know, it's just, it's brilliant. Of course, they coded it all into our history. On March 14th, 1948, Freedom Train arrives in San Francisco. That's where the Golden Gate is. March 14th, Pi Day, 1966, British film Born Free was released. March 14th, I guess uh, Clint Eastwood and Meryl Streep won an award uh, for the People's Choice Award for, uh, you know, um, Bridges of Madison Square County. Bill Cosby's in there too. He's back in the news. And then, of course, Michael Jackson's sister, uh, Janet Jackson, Soul to Soul. What's weird is somebody asked me what my favorite movie was 
once, and I said Bridges of Madison County. I don't know why, just that movie just touched me. Maybe it was just the date, right? I'm just like, and it's a bridge. You have to get over the bridge or live what you really live your true dreams and don't hold back. But my God, it's Pi Day. Remember when the twin astronaut went and his identical twin was no longer the same as him because uh, 7% of his genes were altered? This was on Pi Day. World uh, Happiness Report, you know, was also on Pi Day in Finland. And then, of course, then you get the political leaders all showing up on this day as well. Angela Merkel, Z and Putin showing up on this day. Trump also showing up. National Emergency Declaration 2019. They also moved JFK's body to his permanent memorial on March 14th, Pi Day, 1967. I used this icon in the 17th letter movement, and I never knew that his body was put there on Pi Day. Weird. Okay. Now, the Q is Quaf. It's a Hebrew letter in the Hebrew alphabet. It's also the number 19. Now, this is all ties into Kabbalah. So, the Q, the letter Q is Quaf. It means back of the head. Okay. So, that's why he got killed in the back of the head. The constellation that rules it is Pisces, of course, right? Where Pi Day is. Um, and then we have the toe or tab is the cross at the bottom. This is ruled by Saturn and Earth. And the yod, which is hand or finger, is ruled by v Virgo. The tov, uh, which is the last letter, the tov, sorry, is uh, Saturn. It's not ruled by a constellation. It's just represented by Saturn and Earth, which is the golden age on earth right he's the keeper of time he's the one that he's the cold dad that teaches you lessons when you're on earth but he's also the one that rules the golden age now here it's tying it to the tarot cards as well the 22 tarot cards now the number eight which is like the infinity right it's like the mobius strip it is ruled by leo and leo is the serpent okay so leo the lion and the serpent, the serpent is tribe of Dan. So there's a connection there. And we know that Babe Ruth died when, you know, August 16th, when the sun was in conjunction with the main star of Leo Regulus. And so did Elvis Presley. And so did Aretha Franklin. And the gates of hell were made on that day. You know, so there's lots of symbolism to the serpent, right? This now we're starting to realize the the, the Leo, the lion, is really the tribe of Dan. They say it's the tribe of Judah, but there's a connection here to the serpent in the Hebrew alphabet. Also, the number 18th card is the moon, which is the quaff, which is the back of the head in Pisces. You know, so the moon is the Q. March 14th in 2025 is a Friday, and it's the beginning of the Purim, a Jewish holiday. This all ties into the Queen Esther. So I know that Juan O'Savan had mentioned um, the book of Esther a lot. So we have the Golden Gate ascending and the serpent descending, which is Gemini. So here's the wheel. Bottom of the wheel is you know, below the ground. Above the top part of the wheel is in the sky. So we have the Golden Gate ascending and Gemini descending. Most of the planets like that are all the tail of the whale are in the third house, which is ruled by Gemini, which is like the pillars, right? The two twins. And it, there's an opposition, strong opposition to the moon, which is the, the blood moon on Zavi Java. Okay, so there you can see it in a wheel format. This is American Pie Day. Yoo-hoo! Gotta eat that cherry pie. That cherry pie is a blood moon. <laughs> Each little cherry. Now here they have the tribe of Dan with the serpent or the apple, right? It's in the Maseroth, and it rules Scorpio. Scorpio is death, but it's, it's also the way out of here. The upper house is Ophiuchus. It's the doorway holding the snake, and Asclepius is walking away with this. With this. He used to be walking out, not facing. Okay, so it's really ascension. And so, you know, they're saying they make it seem all evil through the Bible, right? Like the serpent and everything, but... It's all to do with this realm or the other realm. You know, the God of this realm is a jealous God. He doesn't, he didn't want you to leave. Okay, so, you know, he didn't want you to become wise. So there's a, a, there's a little flip in the Bible. You know, it's not as clear as what we're being, t being told it is. 
So there's different interpretations, right, of these uh, Tav, the last letter in the Hebrew alphabet, which represents Saturn Earth. Now, to me, this is really important. The Druids uh, said the symbol was the supreme god of Jupiter. Among the Egyptians, the, the Tav was an oval ring or handle, became the crooks or cross and sata, and was used by them as a constant symbol of life. Now, they're also saying it was a symbol of Thoth, who teaches you how to have the hidden wisdom. And then there's other, this other part here saying, you know, the, the Templars used it, they idolized it, and it was because of the bath and madness, you know, it's all bad, bad, bad. So that implication that it's bad. But it was, its origin is rather to be looked for in the supposed Hebrew idea as a symbol of preservation. It is in the sense symbol of salvation from death and eternal life, and it was adopted into the Masonic system. I think at the bottom here, yeah, it's saying it's it's a uh, it's really infinity. Okay, so I want to kind of show you how I'm starting to see the whole tribe of Dan symbol is tying to the Ansata cross is really the ankh and. It was originally a serpent on the Tav cross. The Tav cross just looks like a T, and they put the serpent at the top, making the loop, like they're saying in the Egyptian. It's a loop, it's a circle, and that's the snake. So there you go. The, the Ankh is the tribe of Dan, it's the snake, it's the serpent. So the tribe of Dan symbols are also the great seal of the U.S. Um, it can be a snake, it can be a black horse, it can be an eagle. Like I said, it, it's the judgment is part of the tribe of Dan. It's the scales, justice, right? Now, it also looks like the It movie. They used it. They used the same thing. You two will float with the balloon. This red balloon represents the blood moon. The whole thing with the beetles, right? The scarab beetle in Egyptian mythology, it actually represents the moon. I've done videos on that. And the beetles did this bed in, well, Yoko and... and uh, John Lennon in Montreal and he's writing these songs remember love and in the document there's this big red balloon floating up in the sky and it just boggles my mind because I painted this when I was young it's just like ah you know you're falling out of the balloon it's not good I don't know if you've seen this picture of the little girl with the heart and the she's trying to grab the red balloon but she loses it she doesn't actually you know and then other times she's floating but Justin Bieber had it tattooed on his arm. And this is from a famous graffiti artist that nobody knows his real name. And he's like super, super wealthy because this, this picture um, is actually, I think, the most expensive picture ever sold in the Sotheby's art auction. They had it in auction and then as soon as the person, you know, won the bid, it started to shred itself. It had a mechanism in it that he put in there that it shreds itself. Now, this is when, but the person still bought it and you can read all about it. And it's like going, going, gone. And you know, it, anyhow, the whole point is this artist, if you look into him, his name is Bansky. And he, he does a lot of symbolism of the bad, you know, what the bad path is. And he's showing us the bad path. He does really risky things, like he put this painting in the Louvre and then, you know, walked out and, you know, then the cops come, whatever. You have a gas mask on. He changes the queen on some money to Princess Diana, which is, represents the moon. Right? We know that, right? The goddess Diana. Then he has a bunch of stuffed sheep and pigs in a slaughter truck. They're just, uh, you know, stuffed animals, but it's called Sirens of the Lambs. The sirens are the ones that take you to the sea and drown you. The sea is the sky, okay? They come and get you and take you up into the sea. It's not good. It's not the good path. The Tav was a T, right? And it was originally an X. So it's the X that's going across the United States, but it's the T. Now, it also represents infinity, the physical world. Okay? So this is all... It's all, it all ties together. It's absolutely amazing. To me, the tav or the toe looks like the infinity symbol, right? It's, it's pi. 
So that, they're saying it's infinity. It, it, I know it's not identical, but it's freaking close. And this is the symbol that people put over their doorway to stop, you know, um, evil coming to their home, right? It's that symbol. So the way it's all tying in to the dates and everything and the symbolism, I'm convinced that this is actually the pie symbol. Here's somebody explaining how the Hebrew um, language all ties into the first clone sheep. And it was, it was actually happened in the Roslyn Chapel is where they did this first cloning. It, like it wasn't in a scientific lab or something, a Scottish village. So, and, and this first cloning, you know, they called the clone Dolly, right? And so this is really all tying into COVID. And they did cloning and now on February 22nd. So we get the 222, you know, 22 is, is, is Tav. It's the last letter in the Hebrew alphabet. It's, it's the T, it's the X, right? So, and this is all tying into um, COVID with Dolly. Do you, you know, do you, do you guys see that Dolly Parton did, sang her song Jolene and changed the words to vaccine and was calling people that didn't want to be vaccinated like cowardly and stupid? You know, she was on TV. So she's now representing, you know, the, the star that took the COVID shot on TV. You know, it's like Elvis took the polio and Babe Ruth took the chemo. And the reason this sheep, this clone sheep was called Dolly Parton or Dolly was because they took the cloning from a breast, right? The DNA. So, you know, this is why they call it Dolly, but the breast represents cancer, the moon. So see how it all works? It's all always sinking back to the sky. Even the Freemason symbol, the compass and the level is in the sky, right? It's Norma is the level and Circinus is the compass. Now Circinus, it represents a goddess named Circe and Circe was kind of like she turned people into pigs on an island. But two of, she had this name called Pharmaco, Pharmacoe. So like pharma, Pharmax was like what pharmaceutical comes from, the original word of pharmaceutical. And this means poison, magician, and sorcerer. Okay, so this whole compass references to being you know, a magician and sorcery, right? And what's crazy is NASA found this nebula and in that constellation, Circinus, and they called it the hand of God because it looks like the hand of God. So the Freemasonry compass symbol represents the hand of God in the sky. So two days later after Pi Day, March 16th, is a little known festival was celebrated in the temple at Edfu. It doesn't um, sound like a goddess festival, but it is. For the hand of God was called um, Isusas or Isusers set. I'm, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. The goddess honored the city of Heliopolis, wore a scarab beetle on her head, the symbol of transformation. Okay, so the the scarab beetle represents the sun and the moon, okay, which is what Pi Day represents, right? The sun and the moon was in conjunction with heaven, Uranus. So she's the counterpart of the god Antum, literally his hand, okay? So the hand of God is two days later after Pi Day. And I know there was a 17th letter post saying two days off. So I always keep that in my mind. What does that represent? So the whole hand of God, we know, ties into Yod, which is um, the hand of God in the Hebrew alphabet. But it's not just hand. It can mean, see Yod, it's number nine, the hermit. It means the finger, the embryo. Okay, so it's, you know, the creative impulse. So being a hermit, number nine on the tarot cards, is how you connect to the hand of God. You have to be in isolation. In the ancient times, they put people out into the desert and you know, you feel isolated because you're no longer thinking in the matrix. You're thinking out of the matrix.
And this is why Elvis Presley sang the song, Take My Hand, Precious Lord, and Aretha Franklin sang the song, Take My Hand, Precious Lord. And they both died on the same day by Regulus, which is the serpent, which is really representing judgment and uh, the ability to disappear from this realm like the tribe of Dan did. They're not, you know, they disappeared out of the Bible. So the Game of Thrones. Cersei is the queen, right? And she, you know, has this relationship with her brother and has children with her brother. And he happens to get his hand chopped off. And the rest of the movie, he's going around with this golden hand, right? So, you know, this is where they get all the mythology from. It's all to do with historic uh, festivals. You know, so the hand of God is like you have to hold up your hand and the masses are all there, but you're screaming and you're going, I'm touching the hand of God. Alchemically, this is part of the top of the Kabbalah tree. It's sulfur, which is your soul. Mercury is your mind and the body is salt. So this is to do with salvation. Salt is salvation. Okay, this is why they have the this thing about Marlon Brando with this Salvation Army they they put that in there I don't know why so then I started looking into Marlon Brando I know it goes on and on but all of it comes back to the 17th letters post so I guess there was a movie Salvation Army Sergeant and so they stuck it in there on Pi Day March 14th and, you know, but it's all to do with salvation, right? Because it's, we're the salvation army. We're the awakened ones. Now, Marlon Brando is quite the character, right? He was really, like, didn't like the system at all. And he, you know, basically, you know, said how he didn't like the way Hollywood was and da-da-da-da-da-da-da. He really was a, a, a person that stood in his own beliefs. Now, the whole reason that it's connected to the 17th letter is because there was a godfather was mentioned. And I never knew what it meant, right? But when I started looking into Marlon Brando and how he, you know, how he thinks and everything, I was like, I really need to look into his work. So, of course, he did this movie called Apocalypse Now. And I have to do a whole thing on that because it's really weird. There's some stuff that happened when on the movie set and everything. But, of course, the, the picture is a blood moon, right? And so then, of course, they... The Economist magazine use Acropolis now. Acropolis is the city of the dead. And they use this with Angela Merkel. So there's reference to Apocalypse. So this whole thing with Godfather, it was all to do with Marlon Brando and this movie, The Apocalypse Now and The Blood Moon. They even have like March Madness, right? And, and March 13th, 2002 too. So that ties into the cloning of uh, Dolly Parton, right? And then March 13th is like the day before Pi Day. So we're like, okay, so it's March Madness. They're symbolizing that through the team sports now. But the biggest thing is the Ides of March, right? Which all ties into the death of Julius Caesar. Now, the death of Julius Caesar is, you know, the fall of Rome, right? And Washington used to be called Rome. But there's a coin called the Cap of Freedom between two daggers. So March 16th, the same day as the Hand of God festival, is Bacchanalia, which is Roman Empire, which is really Dionytus. His name was uh, Bacchus and then uh, Dionytus, same name. March 17th is St. Patrick's Day. And then Liberalia is in honor of Dionytus, known as Liba Pata. Now, Liba Pata is really Pluto. So I'm like, is, so Dionysus is Pluto, right? So this is ancient Rome as well. So interesting. So we have like M March 13th, 14th Pi Day. Two days later is the 16th and then the 17th. So there's like all through there, it's all to do with freedom and the Ides of March on the 15th. So it's all to do with freedom. So Bacchanalia, it's saying here, uh, Rome's native uh, cult, Liberalia, like liberal, uh, which is dedicated to Liber, the spouse of Libera, also known as Persephone. Okay, so 
or sorry, Persephone is the right pronunciation. So she is married to Pluto. So Libera, Liber and Libera are Persephone and Pluto. Okay, so this is how it works. It's so confusing, but it's really, they're Dionetus. So I'm thinking Pluto is really Dionetus now as well. And I'd mentioned this magnetic storm that happened in Quebec, right, in 1989. It happened in March. Guess what day? March 13th. Okay, so it ticked the power out. It happened to be the solar cycle of number 22. Well, 22 again. It's, uh, you know, <laughs> it's the tarot cards. Back to Tav again. The serpent. So maybe it is going to be on uh, March 14th. From the date of the March 13th geostorm, it's 36 years ago and one day, but it's or 432 months and one day. Okay, so you get the one, two, three, four. So it would be perfect mathematically if it was to happen on Pi Day. And March 13th is like number 33. Same as Dolly Parton when she did her vaccine thing. It was March 3rd, number 33. So, uh, so now they're saying this happened at the number 244. So we have the number 24 in there again. And then they had Aurora Borealis, you know, and both ends of the planet. You could see them. So it's all to do with the Aurora Borealis. It's about the inner Earth, right? It's the Aurora Borealis. Something's going to happen. And this... Another CME is going to come into the planet. That's what's going to happen. It's really, and then guess what? It also took out the stock exchange in Toronto on August 16th. We had another mini one. Okay, so <laughs> they pull that in there too. It's hilarious. And you won't believe it. When August 16th, when the, the little mini one happened, it was a blood moon. So they pulled the blood moon into it as well, right? So I'm just like, oh my God, it's brilliant. Now, somebody sent me this. Sometimes I can't answer your, your comments. I get them on my email. The freaking go back on YouTube. The comment's not there. So it's really frustrating. But somebody sent me this on my email. And this is when um, Obama was going on about his birth certificate and Trump was in the audience. This was in 2011. And, you know, he's, he puts this film up about the Lion King pretending he's little Simba being born in Africa right? But it's all reference to the Lion King, and then Trump's just sitting there, you know, kind of like, you know, looking like he's, you know, upset a little bit. But I think they're all acting. There's, there's so much symbolism, and they're all playing the symbolism. But I think it's like, in a way, they're not acting in a way that they're trying not to help us awaken, and but Trump is. I really do. He's trying to help awaken us. So it gets kind of nasty. He goes, he goes, you know, Donald Trump, you know, uh, you know, it's like they knew he was going to be trying already. Um, where he says, uh, you know, you have more important questions to think about, like where is Biggie and Tupac? You know, they're both dead, right, at that point. And uh, was the moon landing fake? You know, he's making fun of him. This is what he's doing. Like, in, 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 it's just, it's like, well, it's like a show, right? And uh, he says here, uh, ouch, Trump bore this onslaught, which was actually, 